JP Morgan Chase. Anytime JP Morgan Chase basically brings down guidance and talks about things like that, I think it's worth paying attention to. So I wanted to cover this quickly for you guys here on the Reaction Channel. I'm going to have a big main channel video coming here today on some portfolio moves and those sorts of things, some big moves out there. But I thought we have to cover this. JP Morgan Chase shares drop 7% after the bank. Uh, basically brings down guidance on interest, income, and expenses. J.P. Morgan Chase shares fell 7% Tuesday after the bank's president told analysts that expectations for net interest, income, and expenses in 2025 were too optimistic. The current estimate for 2025 of about $90 billion is not very reasonable. Not very reasonable means not happening. Because the Federal Reserve is cutting interest rates, J.P. Morgan President Daniel Pinto said at a financial conference, when it comes to expenses, the analyst estimate for next year of roughly $94 billion is also a bit too optimistic. So the expense problem is not as serious of a problem, at least in the president's uh, view here, as obviously the, uh, let, let's call it the interest income side. Now, the way you could look at something like this, right? First off, like I said, it's just very rare that JP Morgan ever has to come out and basically tell analysts, like, you guys are way too optimistic. We're not hitting these numbers you guys think we're hitting, right? But this could be, you got to understand, like, JP Morgan is the big dog, right? They are the big dog in the financial markets. We all know that, right? Uh, they're probably, if I had to say, the most well connected bank to the Fed. I mean, you know, it's one of those things you never have concrete proof of this sort of stuff. But if I had to say who's the most close to the Fed out of all the banks in the world, my personal belief is it's JP Morgan. I really truly believe that. That JP Morgan has an inside track to the Fed uh, more than any other bank uh, in the entire world. And that includes Goldman Sachs. And so when I look at something like this, this could be JP Morgan basically signaling that the Fed's going to bring down interest rates maybe a lot more than people are anticipating here, right? Than analysts are anticipating. And that's the way I'm reading this personally. With While the bank expects to be in the ballpark of the 2024 range for net interest income, that's NII there, of about $91.5 billion, the current estimate for next year of about $90 billion is not very reasonable, he says. Not very reasonable. I don't think that number will be, uh, I think that number will be lower, he says, right? He declined to give a specific figure. So basically, J.P. Morgan does not believe the Federal Reserve will be messing around, I think, in regards to interest rates. And I think he believes they're going to bring them down quite a bit, which I think is definitely worth paying attention to. And that might speak more volumes about where it could speak volumes one of two ways. You can look at this one of two ways. JP Morgan could expect the, by the way, a lot of interesting moves going on out there today. We'll speak about that, all that on the main channel. But this could be one of two scenarios. One is inflation comes down much more rapidly, maybe even goes under 2% in 2025. And so the Fed just you know cuts rates left and right because inflation is not even a concern, right? That, that could be one way of looking at this. And like JP Morgan knows that inflation is not going to be at all an issue in 2025. So the Fed's going to cut rates like insane, right? Another way you could look at this is you could say JP Morgan knows that the economy is going to be a lot rougher than everybody's expecting for 2025, right? And so Therefore, they know the Federal Reserve is going to be forced into a situation where they have to cut rates much more rapidly than anybody's anticipating right now because the economy will be far worse, right? That's another way you could look at it. And you could look at it a third way. A third way essentially would be a way of, of you know, you could look at this, say, J.P. Morgan, the president of J.P. Morgan. He, he believes that inflation is not going to be an issue next year, but also the economy could, you know, be not in the best place. And so be between those two, basically, the Fed's going to bring down interest rates much more rapidly than a lot of folks are anticipating. So uh, I think it's definitely worth worth noting when J.P. Because like I said, when J.P. Morgan... They almost never come out and, you know, basically bring down a guidance like this. It's insanely rare. So if it does happen, you, you got to look at that sort of stuff and be like, what do they know uh, about where interest rates are going? They, maybe interest rates are going to fall much more rapidly in 2025 than a lot of people are anticipating, right? And we know the government. We also know the U.S. government. Let's just be honest. Does the U.S. government want interest rates higher or lower? You know U.S. government wants them lower, right? Additionally, 
it doesn't matter who's going to be in office, but I can tell you, if Trump wins, Trump is going to, you know Trump is going to be forcing the Fed. You know, he can't technically force the Fed to lower interest rates, but he's going to be on their back left and right about they need to lower interest rates, rates are way too high, all those sorts of things. You already know that. He already came after the Fed way back in 2018 when a lot of people feel like that economy was actually stronger than the current economy. So you know if he gets into office, he's going to he's gonna be all over the Fed, right, in terms of get these rates down. They're not cutting. They want to crash the economy, all those sorts of things. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting, man. But uh, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see how it all shakes out. But now this is one of those time periods when you got to start already thinking about next year, right? We're only a couple weeks away from going into the fourth quarter of the year. And so I created you guys a brand new workshop, Stocks to Buy Now for 2025. It goes into essentially looking at different stocks, talking about how to position your portfolio for 2025 because you got to start prepping for that now. That's going to be pinned comment down there for access. Much love and have a great day.